All right, Advanced Math Day, here we go. We've got lesson 5.3.2 using multipliers. All right, so we've got a little uh, article here. It says, the Pi-phone sweep, uh, Pi sweep the nation. Ooh, millions demand one. All right, so teenagers and Hollywood celebrities are expected to flock to an exclusive shop in Beverly Hills, California today, clamoring to pick up the new Pi-phone. See what they did there? Pi phone, iPhone. It's pretty funny. All right. Uh, the Pi phone release began last week when they misspelled one. That's bad. That's like I spelled it. The store pre sold 100 phones. The store expects to sell an average of 15% more this week and each week thereafter. I plan to stand in line all night, said Deli Hillman. As soon as I own one, I'll be cooler than everyone else. Across the globe, millions of fans, and then it goes on from there. All right. So let's see some important information here. They pre-sold 100 phones. That's the zeroth term. All right. That's before any week started happening. They are pre-selling 100 phones. Now, the store expects to sell an average of 15% more this week. So that's after one week. They expect the growth rate, and we're going to end up calling this the common ratio. So we're going to call that R for right now, is 15% more. Now, now, we all know how to do 15% more. You would just do 100, let's clear all this other stuff, 100 times 0.15. Oops, 100 times 0.15. All right, does that mean we're going to sell 15 uh, Pi phones? No, because we're supposed to do more, right? It's 15% more. Well, this is just the growth. When we say 15% more, it means we're going to sell 100 phones, and then on top of that, we're going to sell 15 more phones. So how do we show that multiple there? Because it's not times 0.15, because that's only the growth. Well, what we would do is we're going to sell 100% of the previous phones plus... 15% more. So that's 115%. So what I'm really going to do is multiply by 1.15. And then it shows me selling 115 in the next month. All right. How many Pi phones will be sold in the 4th the, and 10th weeks? Wow, you're going to make me work for this, won't you? All right, well, let's think of this. In the 0, we're going to have, this is the pre-solds, 100. And then 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th. All right, so how do I go from here to the first week? Well, we just said we're going to multiply by uh, 1.15 because we're going to sell 100% plus 15% more each week. So in the first week, I'm going to have 115 sold. The next week, I'm going to sell 115 and then 15% more on top of that. So in the second week... We just take 115 and multiply by 1.15. And we get 132.25. We can't sell 0.25 phones, so let's call this 132. Now, in the third week, we're going to multiply all 132 of these phones and then 15% more. So times 1.15, which is 152.075. We'll say that's 152. The fourth week, we should sell 152.875.0875 and then times 15% more, so one times 1.15. So that is 174.9, let's call it 175. There we go. Fourth week, 
175. Now, what process are we using right here? We're using the recursive process because we are saying, how do I get to the next term? Now, to get to the 10th term, we could do this. We can keep on multiplying by 1.15 each time, but that's kind of a pain. Now, remember what we're doing here. We're multiplying by the same number each time. So times 1.15, times 1.15, times 1.15, times 1.15. If only there were a way in math to multiply the same number over and over again, if only they came up with something where you would have some kind of notation to show that you're multiplying the same number each time. Yeah, there is. It's called exponents. So what we're doing here to get to the fourth term is we're taking that 100 and then multiplying it by 1.15 four different times. That would be 1.15 to the fourth power. Ah, exponents, my friend. You have made this so much easier. So here we go. So using our calculator, we can just do 100 times. Oh, where is it on this calculator? Ah, there it is. So 1.15, this is the caret button. So this means exponents to the fourth power. And there we get 175. So we can skip right to the one that we want. Beautiful. So that means to get to the 10th term, all I would have to do is do 100. Oh, so this was 175. To get to the 10th term, I would take 100 and then do 1.15 to the 10th power because I'm going to multiply by 1.15 10 times to get to the 10th term using our calculators. 100 times 1.15 to the 10th power equals, thank you very much calculator, it would be 405 pi phones. So we would get 405 pi phones. So we can use exponents to keep track of how many times we're multiplying to get to the next term. All right, if the pi phone sold was a written as a sequence, would it be arithmetic, geometric, or other? Geometric, because we're multiplying by a constant number. Next, write a recursive equation to show the predicted sales of Pi phones for the nth week. So for any week that we want to get to. Remember, in a recursive process, we have to tell where we're starting. So in this case, we would tell them that, hey, you've got to start on the first week. And we would say that T of 1 would equal 115. Now, at this point, if I want to find any week after that, okay, so recursive process, when we say any week after that to find the next week, we would say t of n plus 1. That would be equal to, well, what are we doing to the previous term? The previous term is t of n. What are we doing each time? We're multiplying by 1.15. So times the quantity 1.15. That would be the recursive process because I'm taking the previous term and multiplying by 1.15. We have to tell you where we're starting. In this term, remember in a sequence, there is no zero term. So we are going to say the first term is 115. And then to find the next term, we would take that first term and multiply by 1.15. If I wanted to find the second term, I take the first term 
and or this, you know, if I want the third term, I take the second term and multiply by 1.15. Okay, so that's what that says. The explicit form for this one is right up here. The explicit form for this sequence would be that any term that I want to find, t of n, would be found by taking 100, which is the zeroth term, and then multiplying by that common ratio of 1.15, to the nth power. So if I wanted the 10th term, I would take 1.15 to the 10th power, then multiply by 100. So we can skip to whatever we want to when we use the explicit formula. How many Pi phones will be sold on the last week of the year? The 52nd week, because there's 52 weeks in a year. Should we use the recursive or explicit equations? Hmm, let's think about this. Do I want to find all 52 weeks? Or do I want to just jump to the week that I want to? We want to jump to the week we want to. So the 52nd week would be T of 52. And we would get 100 times 1.15 to the 52nd power to find the 52nd week. This is where a calculator is useful. 100 times... 1.15 to the 52nd power. Ah, beautiful. It looks like we got 143,314 Pi phones sold. So approximately 143, 314. All right. A new iTalk arrival to the Pi phone is about to be introduced it is cheaper than the Pi phone, so there are more expected to be sold. The manufacturer plans to make them and sell 10,000 pre-orders, that's T of zero, and expects the sales to increase by 0.7% uh, each week. Okay, 7%, remember, we're going to sell 100% plus 7% more. So this would be 1.07 as my multiplier. So write an explicit and recursive equation. All right, explicit first. The explicit equation would be T of N equals, and then we would take the original T of zero, so 10,000, and then multiply it by the multiplier, which is 1.07, to the nth power. The recursive process we always have to say what the first term is. Well, I don't know what the first term is yet. So I know that I'm starting with 10,000 and then I would multiply by 1.07 so there would be 10,700. So we'd have to tell somebody that you're going to start with our first term, and the first term is 10,700. After that, if I want to find any next term, so the next term would be equal to the previous term, which is the nth term, multiplied by 1.07 because that's how I get to the next term is by multiplying by 1.07. All right, what if the expected weekly sales increase was 17% instead of 7%? Well, if it's 17%, this would be 1.17 instead. So the explicit for this one would pretty much be exactly the same. except our multiplier would be 1.17 to the nth power. Our recursive would pretty much be the same. We'd still have, oh, no, we wouldn't. T of 1 would not be 10,700. We'd have to say 10,000 times 1.17 and get 11,700. So T of 1 would be 11,700. And then we could say to get to the next term, t of n plus 1, we would 
take the previous term, t of n, and then multiply by 1.17. All right, so in the explicit formula, all we would change is the multiplier. In the recursive formula, we would change the multiplier and we would change t of 1 because t of 1 would change the first term. Remember this number here, this 10,000, that's t of 0. That's the zeroth term that doesn't exist actually in a sequence. All right, almost getting there. i got to rush through this because the bell's about to ring for, for my next class. All right, so 10,000 ITOCs were made and sold initially. Okay, so that was our T of zero. But after that, weekly sales decreased by 3%. Hmm. So decreased means that we would have 100% and then we would lose 3% instead of gaining 3%. So that's 97%. So our multiplier would be 0 0.97. So if I want to find out the number of ITOC sold in the first and 10th weeks, let's go ahead and use our explicit formula for this. We would say the explicit formula would be T of N equals 10,000 sold initially. So that's our T of 0. And then we would multiply it. Our multiplier here is 0.97 to the nth power. So if I want to find the fourth week, that would be the fourth term. That would be 10,000 times 0 0.97 to the fourth power. So 10,000 times... 0.97 to the fourth power, that gives us 8,853. So it went down, which it should because it's decreasing. Our tenth week, that would be T of 10. That would be 10,000 times 0 0.97 to the tenth power. All right, so 10,000 times 0.97 to the 10th power ends up being 7,374. 7,374. And the number's going down because we're decreasing by 3% each month. Write the explicit and the recursive. Well, I already did the explicit. It's right there. So the explicit is that. The recursive for this... Remember, we need to find t of 1 first. So t of 1, I would have to first do 10,000 times 0.97, 9,700. So my first term is 9,700. And then I can say that the next term, t of n plus 1, is equal to the previous term, t of n, and then our multiple is 0 0.97. All right, so in a geometric sequence, the number that each term is multiplied by is called the common ratio. So this number right here, that's our common ratio, or it's called a multiplier. So on that page, we had 0.97. On the previous page, our multiplier or our common, our common ratio was 1.17. All right, what is the common ratio, ooh, I got five minutes before class, for the three situations from 593 through 594? Let's look at them. So 593, we had 1.07 was our common ratio there. And then when we said it was 17% instead, it was 1.17. Then when we said we were losing 3%, our common ratio was 0.97. So we had 1.07, 1.17, and 0 0.97. What is the multiplier for this sequence? What's it multiplying by each time? The multiplier, or the common ratio, is 1. What happens when the multiplier is less than 1, but greater than 0? So that means it's some kind of decimal answer. Well, we had that situation right here. It was less than 1. 
And what happened? Well, we started with 10,000, and then after the fourth term, we had 8,853, then after the tenth, 7,374. So we see that the numbers decrease. So each term decreases. All right, so 5-97, I've got four minutes before class starts, so let's see if I can finish this up real quick. So over here, we're going to write the explicit and recursive equations for the sequences below. Okay, from 1,600 to 2,000, let's see if we can figure out what's going on. So we would do 2,000 divided by 1,600. That's 1 1.25 that it's multiplying by. Let's see if that keeps on happening. 2,500 divided by 2,000. Oops, 2,000. <laughs> 2,500 divided by 2,000. 1.25. Okay, so our common, our common ratio or our multiplier is 1.25. Let's see the next one. 3,125 divided by... 3906.25. That's 0 0.8. And then 2500 divided by that, divided by 3125, 0 0.8. Okay, so our common multiple is 0 0.8. And notice that the number is getting smaller because this number is greater than 0 but smaller than 1. This was getting bigger because the multiplier was greater than 1. For part C, 72 divided by 50 is 1.44. And then 103.68 divided by 72 is 1.44 as well. So this one is multiplying by 1.44. Over here, hmm, this is a sticky wicket. We are... Jumping two spaces. <clears throat> so let's see what's happening from 72 and 50. So 72 divided by 50, that's 1.44. So to go from here all the way to here, that's 1.44. But I'm skipping two spots. So does that mean I just cut this in half? No, because this is multiplying. So what number multiplied twice is 1.44? 1 well, 144 is like 144, so that's 12 times 12, right? So this should be 1.2 times 1.2. Because if you do 1.2 times 1.2, that's a total of 1.44. So we're multiplying by 1.2 each time. Basically, since I'm multiplying twice, I took the square root of 1.44. All right, so there's all your multiples. I am out of time. My class starts in less than a minute. So you can go ahead and finish writing the explicit and the recursive. Remember, in the recursive, you have to use the 2,000 number here, the first term. You have to tell them what the first term is and then how to get to the next one. I'm out of time. Sorry about that. I'll see you guys later. Math hard.